Morning, guys. Thursday. I don't know about you, but I start, I kind of lose momentum. So we're cooking breakfast with our favorite pancakes that we can just throw in the oven. And I realized today, because I usually make their waffles, I thought you did them the same way, like the same time in the oven. Turns out I was totally wrong. I've been making these wrong for like the last several weeks. My kids have basically been eating raw pancakes, but they're fine. So, you know, it'll be okay. We're playing a little Christmas music. We had some excitement at our house last night because the kids ran over to me. I was cooking dinner and they ran over to me after they were dancing to Mariah Carey, which is a sight to be seen. They love her song, her Christmas song, which has a really interesting backstory, which we'll post in, uh, maybe we'll post it next week. And they run over to me and they say, Scorpion, Scorpion, Scorpion. And they're good because they know when to stay away from scorpions. And there was this big old scorpion right by our television that we had to slay. And I meant to tell you about that earlier this week. There's nothing I can't, I hate more than scorpions. I didn't grow up with scorpions. I don't find them endearing. Let me tell you something. If there's ever a story on conservation of scorpions, you're not going to get a fair and unbiased account by me. <laughs> That's the one area where I think I'm not going to be able to do it, guys. I really don't because I hate them. I'm just going to be honest with you. I hate them. And we came home from, I meant to tell you this, we came home on, uh, you know, the Thanksgiving holiday. I like to come into the house. Some people look for intruders, you know, and I look for scorpions. And I came and I said, there's no scorpions. It's so great. You know, the extermination, you know, exterminators working. This is amazing. And then I opened the washing machine to put in a fresh load of laundry. And there's a big old scorpion just in the inside of the washing machine. These are things I never thought I would have to confront in my life ever. One crawled in your sweatshirt, I would die. I would be dead. I just, I don't think I can make it. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> that sounds horrible. Oh my gosh. Huh. Tracy, are you ready for pancakes? You want some more chocolate milk? I was telling them about the scorpion that you found last night. It was good. And now we're looking around the house, and anytime we see a little stick of something, we think that's a scorpion, but it's not. And then we found a huge spider, right? And then a little baby spider. And then a little baby spider. <laughs> I think it's just because it's cold. Okay, here's more chocolate milk. All right, a couple big news stories to get to today. One of the big ones on our site that you'll see is about oil. Some of you were asking about the price of oil, which is such an important question. You'll hear the president often say, you know, cheer on lower oil prices, and he calls it a tax cut for consumers. And he's not wrong about that. Lower oil prices are helpful to us as consumers. I mean, think of how much of your life is dictated by the price of oil. And it's not just about filling up at the, at the gas station. It's about all different products that we use on a regular basis. And a couple months ago, when we first started our coffee talk, I actually did one from the cl my, my, my closet with shoes. Because one of the most impactful interviews I did in the very beginning of my career was with Stuart Weitzman, the, the shoe designer. And he said to me, we were talking, and he said, you know, oil prices affect his business, not just because of transportation, but because, you know, getting the shoes from one place to the next and how much that's going to cost because of fuel prices, but also in production. There's so many, you know, uh, if you look at your shoe today, think about it. Think about the, if you have a rubber sole on your shoe, think about that. And, and how much, um, you know, the price of oil can affect literally every step you take. So oil prices right now are trading below $50 a barrel. And it's the first time we've seen that in more than a year. You don't like this song as much? Oh, okay. Santa Baby is not his favorite. Everyone's a critic. So, I mean, I guess it's a four-year-old, it is kind of a weird song, right? Okay, we're going to do that. What, baby? Here, I think you like, here, Jingle Bell Rock, always the winner. Yeah, yeah there you go. Okay, pancakes, you guys want them? So, oil is trading... <laughs> if a man is singing a song, Trace says it's his song. And if it's a woman singing, it's it's Liberty's song. We're totally all about gender bias in this house. <laughs> I will pour you some more. 
So oil, oil is trading, don't get that out of your mouth, is trading below $50 a barrel. And that's actually not great for everybody. And so let me explain this. Loyal oil prices are good. There is more milk at the table for consumers and for certain companies. But for Mom, these... Mom, you're not eating it. I'm going to put you some stuff on there. Okay. Mom, I'm going to give you some pancakes first. Okay. <sighs> Problem is if oil prices fall too low, you have all these new oil companies that have popped up as part of the... You know, shale boom. The United States is now the world's largest producer of oil, and they're relying on a certain price for the product. <laughs> and <laughs> and if if the price is not high enough, then they can't make the money that they want to make. If they can't make the money that they want to make, then they can't employ the people that they've been employing. Okay, you're gonna choke me out, Liberty. So you need to let go. You need to let go. I'm getting your pancakes. Here, put down. Down here. No, no, you can't. You're going to actually make mommy go to sleep like a UFC fighter. Split, lay down. No, Sit down. No. Yes. No, I want to you that. You can in a little bit, okay? No. I want you to Okay, this is, I want you this is her at two and a half, okay? I, I can't. I can't rise you right now. I'm doing my story. No. Do you want some pancakes? No. Do you want some chocolate milk? <gasps> so one of the reasons why oil prices are lower is because there's a lot of oil in the market and there's concerns that the global economy is slowing down. So on the one hand, while you see oil prices lower being good for us, it also could be signs of not positive things. And so the big question now is whether or not the supply, you know, the oversupply of oil is going to lead to oil producing countries to cut their supply and bring up the price a little bit. Bringing up the price a little bit wouldn't necessarily be a terrible thing overall, but it gets tricky. You know, we don't know what's going on between China and the United States and certain trade policies. We don't know what the economy is going to look like in the next year. So you don't want supply cut too much. So you, you kind of are in this, this little balancing act. Next week, there's going to be a big meeting of the Organization for Petroleum Exporting Countries, and they'll decide what to do with supply. And if the prices st stay this way, <gasps> if the prices stay that way, then they'll likely cut supply to raise the prices a little bit. But we'll see. That's something that we'll definitely cover. Okay, so what you should know, below $50 a barrel, there starts to be a concern about what that means for certain oil companies in America, oil energy producers, what that means for employment. Thank you, New Mexico. Um, <laughs> I, they see it, baby. What just happened? Did you stub your toe? Come on, let's have pancakes. Come on. Come on. Hey, Trace, Trace. Come back. Come back here. 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 So, okay. What you should know, 50, around $50 a barrel. Thank you. But that's not her. It is. It actually is hers. No, this is where did you buy that? I bought one for you, too. But the pink one is hers. I'll find it, baby. Can you just eat some pancakes? Oh, oh okay. Below fifty, <laughs> below fifty dollars a barrel. Hey, hey, no. hey, hey! Sit over there. Sit, sit. Below fifty dollars a barrel. Not great for everybody, even though it means lower gas prices for us somewhere down the line. Um, anything over seventy-five dollars to eighty dollars, people start getting a little bit more worried. So. What you should know is that there is some concern about the market right now, the price is falling too much. And so just be aware when people start cheering on the price of loyal, lower oil prices, you know that there's more, there's a dynamic at play that's a little bit more complicated than that. That's all I want you to know. Now this is all ahead of the G20 meeting that's starting tomorrow with major world leaders. The president's going to be there. I'm looking for syrup. I never can find the syrup. It's the one thing in my house like I never can find. You're really supposed to keep syrup in the refrigerator. Did you know that? Okay. I, did, I mean, I, I knew, I, I don't think he ever kept syrup in the refrigerator when I was growing up, which might explain a lot. Okay. I don't, they're happy, so I'm not even going to worry about it. Do you want syrup? Good. Okay. Okay. You guys, eat there for a second. 
<laughs> so one thing I want to just mention to you also about Saudi Arabia, something happened in Congress yesterday. Some of you have been asking about Yemen, and I just want to touch on this really quickly. So remember that when President uh, Trump goes to the G20 in Argentina, he's going to be around Russian President Vladimir Putin, who's, by the way, uh, really watching what's happening between Russia and Ukraine. There's a lot of tension happening there, not getting a lot of attention around the world, so we're watching it. Um, he's, the President Trump's also going to be around the Saudi Crown Prince for the first time since the murder of the Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi in the Saudi consulate in Turkey. Uh, lawmakers are really frustrated with the administration. They think that they're not getting fully briefed on what the administration knows about whether or not the Crown Prince ordered this murder. So there was a hearing yesterday. The Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State were in a classified setting and briefed senators. The director of the CIA was not there, and senators were upset about that. They walk out of this meeting. Senators have a vote to basically allow a vote next week to vote on whether or not America should stay uh, uh, involved in the civil war in Yemen. And you're like, well, why, how is this all attached? We've been supporting the, uh, the Saudis uh, in their side of the civil war in Yemen. Yemen has the worst humanitarian crisis in the entire world right now. You have uh, people in poverty, you have children starving. It's terrible. There's a group called the Houthi rebels who are challenging the established government in Yemen. That established government is um, hanging on by a little thread. Iran is supporting the rebels, Saudis and the United States are supporting the established government. This civil war has gone on and on. There's been chances for a ceasefire talks, but one side or the other doesn't show up. It's bad news. It's also specifically bad news for us because Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, the most dangerous branch of Al-Qaeda, makes its home in Yemen. And this sort of chaos is helpful to terrorists because no one's watching them as closely. And although we have a big drone campaign against them in Yemen, it's, you know, uh, no one inside the country is working on our side to try to, fi you know, find out where they are. And we don't have a huge presence there because the, the country is in complete and total chaos. So watch that for that vote next week. And we'll watch to see if there's any further movement on Yemen, but not supporting the Saudis in Yemen as a way to kind of give them like a little jab for what happened with this, this murder of the journalist uh, could be a potential... Uh, could be potentially what lawmakers are trying to do. We'll see if they actually do it. But right now, they're threatening the administration. Hey, you're not giving us enough information, so we're not going to support your, our ally because we don't know if we should be supporting the ally. So that's a little bit about what's happening there. So uh, just keep in I mean, all these dynamics are at play, right? Because the administration wants to remain friendly with our Saudi ally in part because of what's happening with the oil market and needing the Saudis to um, to basically have an oil policy that's beneficial for the United States. So you see all of this is sort of connected. And the administration has decided that that's more important to them than what happened with this murdered journalist. I mean, quite frankly, that's what they've come out and said, the Secretary of State and President Trump. And you have lawmakers that say, no, we can't, we can't make that call because if the Saudis are allowed to have a state-sponsored murder in another country, what sort of Pandora's box are we opening up? Okay, a lot of dynamics there. <laughs> Hopefully that's helpful in, in some way. Just kind of going through my mind, I want to, uh, you guys to pay cl close attention to a quote by the mother of uh, one of the soldiers that was killed just yesterday. We, we talked about that was killed on Tuesday. Um, I think it's important that we hear from the families and we don't sort of forget that they're what they're going through. So please check out her quote on our site. I can't do it justice, but it's important to know who these people are. Who's, who these people were that died serving for us. And <clears throat> today is the day that Louisa May Alcott was born. She's the author of Little Women. And surprising to know about her, she actually served as a Civil War nurse and used that in her writing. But she was in real, real poverty growing up. Even though her dad was friends with people like Nathaniel Hawthorne and Henry David Thoreau, like, he just didn't, he wasn't on the inside and he didn't make a lot of money and they were really, really poor. And her writing lifted the entire family out of poverty. Uh, made me want to go back and read some of her books because of just the topic that we're all kind of con confronting in America today about gender roles and, and poverty and... Um, and, you know, I just don't think I, I read a lot of good good books anymore. Do you guys do a lot of reading? Should we do a book club? Should we do that? 
I was saw one of my friends posted. You could follow her, Spartan Mom, and she posted this cool uh, cartoon that had two mothers sitting next to each other. One was reading a book, and her child was reading a book, and one mom was on the phone, and her, her child was on the phone, and the mom with the phone looked at the mom with the book and goes, I don't know why I can't get him to read. And I'm like, Dory. So, should we do a book club? I think that might be kind of cool. I just don't know. We might need like two months to read a book. I don't know how these people read a book a month. I don't know. I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> but if you have any suggestions on that, let me know. And check out the really cool quote from Louisa May Alcott on our site today. Oh, thank you. The sunscreen. Can I have that back? Can I have it back? Final thing, speaking of books. Have you guys read Roald Dahl? You know Matilda, the BFG? Netflix is turning his... Um, his books into an animated series. I loved his books. So I'm really excited about that. Trace and I were talking about that yesterday. Can I have the sunscreen, please? That's not going to be good. Thank you. It's expensive. And this is what it looks like all the time. And we have to throw it out. Okay. Have a great day, guys. And um, all right. Well, think about the book club. We'll do it. Maybe that could be a resolution for 2019. Maybe not 12 books, but maybe we could do six. I think that sounds doable. Okay. Something. Let us know what you'd like us to check out. Info at smarternews.com. Have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.